Hi, I'm Rob Mancabelli, and I am an educator who was a teacher and an administrator. And now I'm currently the CEO and co-founder of an organization called Bright Bites, whose mission it is to improve the way the world learns. What I want to talk to you about today is about the new digital divide. Now, what you might be thinking to yourself is, what happened to the old digital divide? Well, it's still there, actually. Um, the old digital divide is the one that was between people who had digital technologies in the internet age and people who didn't. And sadly, there are a number of people in the world who are still disconnected in schools around the globe. But the new digital divide is something that's a little more insidious. Um, the new digital divide is the difference between uh, places where they have technology and they're creating true transformation within teaching and learning in the classroom and places where they have the technology and they're really just digitizing 20th century practice. If you think about it, um, the second one is the, the classic example of you know, taking something like the same old worksheet that you've always had for the past 20 years and putting it up on the learning management system. Uh, thereby stepping into the 21st century in a small way, but not really changing the pedagogical experience in the classroom. I think it's really best illustrated by a brilliant example that was shared with me by, of all people, an eighth grade girl. I asked her, um, I was actually doing in a middle school a uh, uh, round table of about 12 middle schoolers, asking them what their greatest learning experience was. And she raised her hand and she said to me in an excited voice, Facebook has changed my life. And I wondered whether or not she had heard the question the right way, but she had in fact, um, and gave me something that I rarely retell the story without getting chills. She said, all my life I've been a horrible math student and I've spent years crying whenever I had to go home uh, and do math. Um, in fact, I used to be at the kitchen table and my parents would have to basically get me through the night. She said, but this year I'm in a math class where we have Facebook. And when I go to do my homework for that class, I immediately connect with not only students in my class, but other students in my school and students from other schools. And what I have found is, is that First of all, I almost never get what the teacher is saying during the class, but they do. And so they start teaching it to me. They start telling me things that I didn't know and telling me things I didn't get. And then in other classes and in other schools, those teachers even teach things differently, um, using different techniques, and sometimes I get those better. And lastly, and I kind of hate to say this, have you ever heard of this guy named Khan? He is amazing. And sometimes he does stuff. People put those videos and the links and stuff in there. It's fantastic. When I get done, I actually know the math. And she looked at me like this was the most brilliant realization she had ever made. So I was curious about how, you know, how other teachers in the school were reacting to this and what her teacher was doing. So I asked her innocently, um, can you tell me which teacher um, did this so I'd be able to follow up with them and find out what else they're doing in their classroom? To which she said, oh, my teacher doesn't know anything about this. Then she said, oh my God, you're not going to tell my teacher, are you? I said, well, why? Why would it be important if I told your teacher? And she said, you can't tell my teacher. You can't tell my teacher. You don't understand. They're all going to think we're cheating. They're they're going to think that we're doing something wrong. They're going to make us stop. Whatever you do, you cannot tell my teacher. And there, my friends, is the new digital divide. Um, you have a, a student who I asked to share her greatest learning experience. And when she was done telling me about it, she begged me not to tell her school because they would make her stop. You know, we have on one side of the equation um, the 20th century and we have the same teaching techniques and learning outcomes that we've had for almost 100 years. And on the other side, we have all of the remarkable things that can be done with connectivity and nonlinear progressions and individualization and personalization of curriculum and assessment and instruction. And we have a gap in between those two, and we are trying to fill that gap with iPads and Chromebooks and learning management systems. 
And we're hoping that if we put enough stuff in the gap, that our teachers will walk on the stuff from the 20th century to the 21st century. And as someone who's been an educator, um, I can tell you that it won't happen. And if we're really going to take advantage of this transformative moment, this moment in time where everything is shifting and changing in education, we're going to have to embrace the reality of how change happens, which is to have each and every one of us who's in education begin to really think deeply about the ways in which pedagogy changes in a hyper-connected classroom where we can do anything at any time, anywhere, and the most important part, with anyone. Thank you.